Hello, everyone, and welcome to our talk. My name is Peter Hunt. I'm a software engineer for Red Hat working on OpenShift. I primarily focus my time on the projects Cryo and Podman and Kanmon and other container-related technologies. Hello, everyone. My name is Urvashi Monani, and I'm a senior software engineer on the OpenShift Node team at Red Hat. I mainly work on Cryo and other container tools such as Podman, Builder, and Scorpio. Today, we're going to talk about how one can contribute to open source projects. Getting started with contributing to open source projects can be very difficult due to how many different projects there are. And narrowing your scope down to the CNCF doesn't really help that much either. There's just so many. So to make it easier for you today, we'll show you how to contribute to Cryo. So what is Cryo? Cryo is a lightweight container engine focused on making Kubernetes container deployments as secure and seamless as possible. Cryo implements the Kubernetes container runtime interface, hence the CRI in Cryo. The O stands for Open Container Initiative, which means that Cryo supports all OCI compatible images as well as all OCI compliant runtimes, such as Kata, RunC, Gvisor, and CRUN. The Cryo development process embodies the Unix philosophy which states that you should design programs that do one thing, to do it well, and to work well with other programs. To that end, Cry uses a number of components under the hood that focus on different areas of the container space, such as storage, image management, and networking. This way, each building block of Cryo can evolve at its own rate while Cryo picks features that best supports Kubernetes requirements. We have other tools such as Podman, Builder, and Scopio that are built on top of the same components to address adjacent problems in the container space. So even more open source container-based projects that you can all contribute to. Now let's look at the open source process. So now that you have picked a project to work on, the next step is to learn more about it. You should start by always going through the README as well as any contributing guidelines available. Then, you should clone the repository and try playing around with the project in your own environment. Change some code around, add some new test cases, don't be afraid to break some things. Another good source of information on any project is blog posts or talks by the maintainers. We really love talking about our babies. In fact, the Cryo repository has a doc called awesome.md with links to articles, talks, tutorials, and just about anything Cryo related. So now that you understand the project at a high level, you have cloned the repository, you've played around it with a bit, the next step is to find something to work on. All repositories have an issues page, which has a list of tasks that need to be done. These issues can broadly be broken up into two main categories, bugs and features. Bugs are when the program doesn't behave as expected. They are generally found when users test the project in the wild or in their production environments. On the other hand, features can be thought of as nice to have things that help make the project even better. Features are usually decided upon by community discussions through either issues or SIG meetings. Speaking of features, here are some cool things we're working on for the near future that were precipitated by the community. Dropping the infra container where it is not needed will improve the speed of containerized workloads. We're also adding cgroups v2 and user namespace support, as well as increasing our unit test coverage. Other exciting work includes integration of Lipod with Cryo and potentially moving some of our components over to Rust to improve performance. And everyone is welcome to contribute to these features. Now circling back to the issues page, most repositories will have some variation of a good first issue label on their issues. These labels highlight bugs or features that the maintainers have determined are of low difficulty, so new contributors will easily be able to pick them up. Once you have built up your confidence and competence, the next step is to look for issues that have help wanted on them. These are issues that maintainers need help with and are actively looking for community contributors to assist on. Finally, another useful task to build your familiarity with projects is fixing the documentation. Contrary to popular belief, maintainers are not perfect and there will be typos and errors in most docs. Next, we'll have Peter walk us through a full workflow for contributing. 
Thanks, Irvishi. Hello again. I'm now going to walk us through a demo of choosing an issue to work on, submitting a pull request, and then having that pull request merged. We're going to start off by trying to figure out, find an issue that we want to work on. So let's look at the cryo repository. So we've got a bunch of issues here. Um, but I think this one that I was originally on seems like a pretty good candidate. Readme is not confident enough. I think it can make the readme more confident. So I uh, will decide this. It's labeled the good first issue, and I'm pretending to be a first time. So I can say, I can take this. And maybe a, uh, a maintainer would assign me. So now that I've chosen an issue, we have to now uh, decide on, we, have, we should probably read the contributing guidelines for how the project works. So many projects have uh, contributing guidelines in a contributing.md or some other file. Cryo is no different. Basically, they talk about some guidelines to keep the style of your contribution in order with the rest of the contributions. So a couple of specific things that Cryo has you do. Uh, it's kind of similar to the <clears throat> Kubernetes guidelines for contributing. We require you to sign up your commits, which uh, gives us an auditable log of all of the com uh, contributions that allows us to thank people who make a good contribution and also uh, follow up with people who have made a contribution that there's an issue with. We also require uh, some other things like release notes or documentation, uh, which is for showing users some uh, user-facing changes. And we like when there are updates to the tests that if there's a code change to test, to uh, reveal uh, regressions and also test your new behavior. So now that we've, uh, you know, kind of looked at the contribution guidelines, let's go through the process of opening a PR. So we're going to do, um, this is my Git account. I'm going to push it to origin read me confident. So now that we've created the branch, let's go and open a pull request. Compare and pull request. So we're going to uh, go from my fork to the master. And we're going to fill in some information here. This, the kind of this is documentation. This is kind of crowd specific, but it follows the form of Kubernetes and many other projects. We should be more confident. We got to talk about how we fix it. So let's keep a ref to our uh, issue. Fixes that. And a release note made made me more confident. So now that we're creating this pull request, we're going to notice a couple of things. One is we get some reviewers automatically assigned to us, and those are people that are maintainers, and they'll come and review our code. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. And then we've got a bunch of tests that automatically start running. And these tests uh, theoretically should pass before we merge the code. So let's now talk about the process for merging. So I've put up my PR, what has to happen before my PR gets merged. So the cryo itself has some gating criteria as every other project does uh, before PRs can get merged. We have uh, many different tiers of tests. So we have the validation test, which check doc updates, uh, make sure that uh, the git commits are sane, check for release notes. Uh, and most of these uh, tests are automated. So, or, so we, uh, you know, we, a bot can just tell us when a contributor has not done something. And then we have some unit tests, which test some internals in cryo. Uh, it's good for unit test coverage. And then integration tests, which test cryo with crycuddle. These are good for testing cryo specific features that aren't necessarily covered in the uh, Kubernetes end to end tests. And then we have our end to end tests, which are really the meat and potatoes of our testing suite. And those cover uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift end to end tests to make sure that any change we make in cryo doesn't break the you know, upstream compatibility. And finally, for a PR to get merged, we need at least two look good to me 
on a PR as well as we need a maintainer to approve it. So I'm going to show a, an example of a PR that has all of these criteria. So notice we have the approved label here and it has the hold, but I gave it the hold. So I'm going to hold cancel and look at me because we have one, two uh, people and I myself an improver and the person who sent it is also an improver. So we're going to uh, set this and it also has passed all the tests. So we know it's a, it's a good change. So that's an example of moving from uh, the, a choosing an issue to tracking all the way through. If we had actually merged this change, which I don't think we will, uh, then it would automatically close this issue. See, it's linked here. Uh, and, but we won't do that today. So finally, the question would be, how do we get our fixes into our distributions or you know, downstream? So in open source, we have a flow that goes from upstream to downstream, where upstream is like this GitHub you know, uh, upstream master where we push all of the changes. And uh, then those changes are uh, validated and verified and tested until they go downstream which, when they're packaged for your distributions or your different uh, you know, Kubernetes uh, environments. Um, Cryo has an easy distinction between upstream and downstream. Upstream is uh, git main or git master, and that is the, the, the main branch uh, where we do our development. And then the downstream is all the release branches. We have the release branches corresponding to Kubernetes releases. So our 118 would be our latest downstream release as of the time of recording this. Typically downstream only gets bug fixes uh, because we want to keep downstream stable and not disturb current users of the downstream. And then, so if you uh, give us a feature, we're probably going to try to wait until next release to get it in. Um, so that is the end of our talk. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, we have a couple more resources here. We have our website and a couple places. We're always happy to please reach out if you have any questions. We'd love your contributions. I especially would like you to uh, get rid of all of my bugs and fix all of my typos in the readme. Thank you very much for coming. Are there any questions? And most importantly, we look forward to your contributions. Thank you.